So I've been using Emacs as a text editor for a very long time now. And recently I decided to write my own Emacs configuration. So if I bring uh, Emacs up, you can see that I've got my configuration here. And today I just want to sort of talk about Emacs versus Vim and why that doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you really can't compare Vim to Emacs and also why uh, Vim users just don't get Emacs. It's even mentioned in my dashboard here. So first of all, this is Emacs and this is Vim. The first difference is that Emacs is its own program while Vim is a terminal program. So Emacs is a GTK application actually. Uh, it's a very sneaky way of integrating GTK into Emacs because this is all just text and Emacs is still a GTK application. So you've got Vim here that's just a terminal application and you've got GVim which is like similar to Emacs. You know if you open up uh, Emacs without a config file that's going to be init to temp. So this is what uh, Emacs without a config file looks like. And let me just close this out and this is what GVim looks like. But still then Vim is just usable out of the box. I can change my Vim color scheme like this and I can use Vim as is but Emacs is meant to be configured and I'm gonna go through a lot of the features of Emacs as well as what differentiates it from Vim starting with the fact that it's written in or it's configured in Emacs list so I'm gonna open up my Emacs config here go to the very top and uh, I'm gonna I'm not gonna do a deep dive into this because it's only just three sections. There's the information packages and Emacs settings. That's my Emacs config. So I can go ahead and expand this so you can see all of the titles here. So it's using Alpaca as a package manager. And then we set up use package that allows us to install packages. So then we do evil mode, uh, general key bindings. It's like setting your key binding. So if I press space dot, it will bring up the find file menu stuff like that and we've got nerd icons dashboard vertigo is the one that shows these lines here by default this is just one single bottom line but vertigo extends this theme i'm using doom theme so i can do a load theme you can see all of these are doom themes here and orderless is like an auto completion mode line is the bottom line here emacs does have a default one which I will just show you. This is the default one, and then mode line just extends that. V term is a terminal emulator inside of Emacs. Although most of the time, what you use is E shell. So, this is what E shell looks like. You can already see I'm using E shell for something else. So, here we are in E shell, and we've got some Emacs settings like disabling the menu bars. Line numbers, initial buffer is going to be the dashboard right here. And uh, we've got stuff like tabs and fonts. That's my Emacs config. But I'm not here to talk about the Emacs config. I'm here to talk about Emacs. So Emacs is supposed to be a replacement for pretty much everything. Your terminal, your text editor, your music player. That's a joke that some people make that say, Emacs is a really great operating system. It just lacks a good text editor. And Emacs is actually, uh, Emacs stands for Editor Macros, I think. It's an Emacs Lisp interpreter, how you pronounce that. So here's the Emacs Lisp right here. If I open up config.el, so what I do is I write my config in org mode and it gets synced to this config.el. So I do not edit this file. This is generated by Emacs. The file I edit is config.org, so let me just show you that, right? So let me open this up, and we can see that we have a whole bunch of code blocks. This is all written in Emacs Lisp. Emacs Lisp is the language that you use to configure Emacs, and you use it, uh, most of the time it's just a copy and paste job, and you do like a Emacs, you know, Alpaca is a package manager. You go ahead and search for that and you click on this and what you do is you go here, you see this e-lisp, you copy that, you paste it into your Emacs config 
so and you've got your emacs config working well here's my emacs here so that's i just pasted that in and it works perfectly then we set up use package this is just two lines we've got evil modes now once we set up use package it's really easy you just do use package the name of your package and that's how it works so that's an uh, emacs configuration with elisp now if you open up a uh, new vim here you can see that this is uh, usable so if i go to dot uh, config nvim i don't think that exists so i'm just gonna open up my emacs config in here why not right and this is my new vim here it's the default new vim the default new vim is usable the default vim is usable you know you can set a different color scheme it's all done so quickly but with uh, emacs you can't use it like that you have to config it so i already showed you the default config and this is what people get wrong they open up the default emacs and they're like oh i can't use this this is hard they quit they don't know much about emacs actually so most of the people that are like using Vim or anything, they don't get a lot about Emacs. Emacs has a whole bunch of features. Like uh, if I go ahead and open up a wallpaper here, this wallpaper is being viewed inside of Emacs in a text buffer. You can see the line number here. This is a text buffer. The way Emacs does this is that it's a program, the GTK program. So you can view this image. It's a text editor still. It's still in a text buffer. That's the cool thing about Emacs. You can do pretty much anything. I can view a web page inside of Emacs. I can view like a visual it's called view. So if I just open up youtube.com, I'm not sure if you is able to browse YouTube because you know it's a really big website, but stuff like my blog for example you will be able to see this website and open that up so emacs has got all of these features and emacs is not just a texture you know it has all of these plugins and features like packages and all of that emacs is this environment that once you get invested in it it's gonna be life-changing so once you try emacs you're gonna love it you will never switch back and vim users just don't get it so they're like, hey, this Vim feature doesn't exist in Emacs. That's because you have to install a package for it. You're thinking about a Vim modes like insert mode here, here. Evil mode will get that for you. You want a Vim key bindings. You can you can get even more key bindings with general.el. You want like a Vim uh, power line here. This is not a power line, but you can get one called powerline.el. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. So you can get that if you want to release and you you have all of these features in emacs you can make emacs mimic vim you cannot do the exact opposite that's the difference here vim cannot be like emacs emacs can be like vim so emacs is just this whole huge rabbit hole that people don't understand so i heavily recommend you give a try to emacs you know and the reason I use Emacs is because it's just great. It has all of the features I want. It's fast, it's powerful, and it's magical. It, it's always what I wanted with Vim. So stuff like uh, this is a very small thing, but I love it. It's called uh, color highlighting. So if I open up, let's say, my bar config here. If I open up my bar, does Vim have this feature where it highlights the colors? with the actual color code and it works with any sort of file this color highlighting is better than that of vs code because i don't know if vs code is uh, installed on the system no it's not but vs code does have color highlighting but it doesn't work with some file types and i have no idea why it works this is a default feature in emacs and it works perfectly so i can have this emacs workflow that is tailored down to my liking you know i can close out this uh, tab here i'm all doing all of this with my keyboard obviously 
and that's Emacs for you. It's supposed to be configured. It's magical. It has a whole bunch of features. You can make it look like Vim. You can never make Vim look like Emacs. So for you Vim users, you're never really supposed to compare Vim to Emacs. Because Emacs is a replacement for everything. Once you get started with Emacs, your terminal, this thing right here, is useless. Because Vim, or Emacs I mean, has a terminal inside of it. I can open an e-shell. This is the Emacs shell. It's not GSH. It's not Fish. It's not Bash. And it has got all of your standard uh, GNU core utils, basically. And let's say I'm editing my DWM config. So you go to DWM config.h and I edit this, you know, I've got my text, maybe I want to change something. And uh, what I do is that I open an e shell and I do a sudo make green install inside of e shell. I am not using my terminal here. My terminal is useless. I'm using Emacs. This is all done in Emacs. That's insane. There's also org mode. If I just open up my email config, this is using org mode. Org mode is also insane. You can convert this into a HTML page, a PDF, anything you want. And it's written in org mode, my config. And what this will do is will take every single code block and output that to config.io. So if I open up my init.io, there's uh, some stuff here that goes old babel load file config.org in user emacs directory that's it that's all you got to do to write your config in old mode emacs is a very advanced text editor so think of vim as like you know in kde you have kwrite and kate so think of vim as kwrite and emacs as kate that's basically what emacs is emacs is vim but even more advanced you can make it feel like vim if you want to i already mentioned that and that's emacs he has got a whole lot of features. So it's it started out as like an Emacs Lisp interpreter. You give it Emacs Lisp code, it will give that code for you. It will run that code for you. And that's Emacs for you. So that's Emacs. I hope I tried to explain Emacs as much as I could because Emacs, you can really explain it. You just have to show how it works. You should have to try it out. For beginners, I recommend Doom Emacs. I use Doom Emacs. This is a lot more similar to Doom Emacs. It's got a lot of Doom Emacs key bindings, like space fs, space dot to open a find file and a lot of that. So, never compare Vim to Emacs. You have first have to try out Emacs, try out Doom Emacs, try out your own Emacs config and all of that. And then you'll realize what Emacs is. So I hope this video, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you understood a lot about Emacs and bye bye.